All right, guys, today we're going to talk about how knife companies become controversial. And I'm doing this video partly because I've had some people question, like, how are Hinders, Striders, Emerson's even controversial knives? So I kind of figured that I would dig into how these knife companies kind of became the way that they are and why some people in the industry or some people in the community, I should really say more than anything, um, <clears throat> think of these knives as controversial uh, brands to work with or to own as far as knives go. So I think as far as it goes, um, when it comes down to it, I think that ultimately the primary way most of these companies such as say Hinderer have become controversial in some different ways and lights is that it is just poor response to um, critics. And also I will say too that I think once you get past a certain threshold of size and uh, attention overall, there will naturally be people out there, whether they, whether they are sent by other comp competing brands or competitors, or just people that love to find fault. I think that it's very similar to YouTube channels, myself included, where there are some people that just hate you because you exist. And, uh, you know, that we can get into a whole conversation about that. And honestly, I really don't give those people much time, and neither do these knife companies. But that is oftentimes how controversy is started. And then also, like I was saying, it is also partly due to what I would say is poor PR or public relations. And so what this means is that invariably, once again, as a knife company grows, like any company, you will find that, naturally speaking, you know, some knives that you make are lemons, they are duds, they are, you know, just not built to the same specifications or, you know, quality standards that they should be. And sometimes that isn't handled well by certain people at these companies. And so whether that's the owner or, you know, one of the affiliates or someone that, uh, you know, ultimately, is making those calls like i said whether it's the owner or it's a pr person themselves they don't always handle it the best way and so therefore controversy breaks out i would say to the last primary reason why controversy can happen is as a company grows and i think it's really related always to a company growing is that there is a fundamental misunderstanding of that company and i think this one is probably most corollary to emerson and strider as a whole because these two companies uh, especially more than hinder themselves were really targeted towards you know working people whether they were military law enforcement or even just blue collar folks that uh, use their knives in industrial applications and so therefore when Strider, Emerson and a handful of other brands made knives they didn't make them to look nice and classy and have smooth actions that are you know, drop shut and you know like these really um, favorable attributes that many of our uh, softer handed friends in the community really come to appreciate. These knives were made for tough people doing tough jobs that didn't care if there was a little bit of lock stick or once again didn't necessarily care if the action wasn't, you know, drop shut smooth or maybe there was a little bit of lock stick in the action. You know, ultimately the people that were the target audience for things like Strider, for things like Hinder, sorry, uh, Emerson weren't supposed to be that. And so therefore these knives were created rough around the edges. I mean, this one on the internal side, um, I say on the non-locking side over here where the detent ball is, the uh, little cutout for the detent ball is entirely rough, jagged um, metal. And so like these things are truly made rough around the edges. Like they are, you know, honestly a little bit sometimes questionable, but like I said, that was really the ethos of design when these knives were coming out like so this is a 2009 um emerson so this is a fairly old uh knife and so when these emersons and striders were originally dropping they were designed for people who just didn't care about those finer things and wanted a working tool and to that point you know things like this emerson you know it has no blade play um you know it is a a rock solid knife right it, it just is built a little rough around the edges once again the action isn't the smoothest and it's totally usable as you can see um but i think that's the whole thing so some people came to some of 
these brands expecting this, you know, kind of drop shut action, right? And what they got was this, not so drop shut, you know, like lock stick, not really drop shut action, right? And so that was part of the reason why some of these con brands became controversial. In addition to this too, some of them became controversial, much like Hinderer here, for having softer heat treats. And once again, heat treat, we've talked about in past videos where having softer heat treats isn't always a problem. In fact, historically speaking, Strider is known for having softer heat treats, even down for some steels to 56 HRC. And that was really because of durability. It was designed so that you could have a knife that you could literally stab into something and pry laterally on that tip and it wouldn't break. And therefore, when you design a blade for prying or at least more industrial applications, it does have to be a softer heat treat or else it will break and chip. In addition to, once again, you know, uh, when it came down to having some of these issues or, you know, people experiencing things like lock stick and kind of being petty, the ethos for brands like Strider and Emerson especially were get lost. You know, that's the way that the blade was supposed to be. If people, and I think one that uh, Strider kind of caught some flack for was people would, you know, like damage the, um, what is it? They would damage the coating or the appearance of the knife and want it corrected. And the company basically told them to pound sand, that your knife, you should appreciate a knife looking used. And so when you, comes down when it comes down to it you know these companies don't care about cosmetics and sometimes they adjust their heat treats for certain steels to lean towards durability as opposed to edge retention and when you do things like this or even when you have bad PR um, you know it can make you look like a bad person and once again too a lot of controversy is started by people who are dissatisfied in life as a whole and are looking to cause issues in the first place. And of course, once again, especially when people like Mick Strider come into this and they aren't very nice or very tactful with their words and they tell people that they should go off themselves, you know, uh, that's not going to make a company look better. That P bad PR response isn't going to help the public image, but oftentimes realize that that is provoked by people in the community. So ultimately it's kind of a little bit of a, a sticky situation, but uh, yeah. So how does controversy form in knife communities? I think, it, like I said, it's a good mixture of the company failing to properly discuss with their community things you know, about their knives and also to the people in the community wanting to stir up and also the people in the community wanting to stir up trouble, wanting to, uh, so to speak, kick the hornet's nest. So, you know, there's a good mixture of both, unfortunately, but uh, yeah. So hopefully this uh, kind of summarizes why knives become controversial or moreover why brands do with three rather controversial knife brands here, Emerson, Strider, and Hinderer. But nonetheless, you know, when it comes to me why I don't really pay much attention to things like controversy and why I don't really care all that much is because I look at the knives and judge them on their individual usefulness and application to myself and their end, once again, like what they're designed to be and do they live up to that? Once again, you know, this Emerson doesn't have any blade play in it, right? So, so long as that is there and it doesn't really have any noticeable lock stick to me, you know, I don't really care that this knife has some cruder features and that it's rough around the edges. I can certainly find a whole list of faults with this knife that something like this hinderer doesn't have. Once again, this hinderer might have softer, it might have a softer heat treat, but as long as I know that going into it and I don't mind, I don't really care. And oftentimes too, the reality is I would almost rather have a knife that's more durable that I might have to sharpen often then have a knife that's less durable that I don't have to sharpen as much because I think one really important note, at least on durability in my opinion, is that it's very easy to correct an edge that's bent, but it's impossible to correct an edge that's broken, right? You can't glue a tip back onto this thing if you snap it, but if you bend the tip, you can straighten it back out. 
So I think it's worth noting that durability in some rights is important. But anyways, guys, that is kind of my, that's kind of the uh, summary of these knives, how they got to where they were with their controversies, respectively. Of course, too, there are also personal factors, like, especially with Mick Strider, because I know someone's going to write it in the comments about his previous claims to be military. And, you know, once again, a lot of these things start with rumors, so that's why I didn't mention it too much, because if you can't prove a lot of what you're saying, then it just becomes a rumor and not so much a controversy. In my opinion, a controversy is something that once again, like say you send or you test a knife from Hinderer that is, you know, like let's say it's 57 HRC when he claims his knives are between 58 um, and 60 per se. Like that's something you can prove and that becomes a controversy or say, you know, um, Emerson's knives are crudely built, right? And then that proves true. They are crudely built or at least the older ones like this that becomes a controversy. That's something that you disagree with and it's something that's provable, right? Like this, uh, Mick Strider's, you know, involvement in the military is a lot of speculation and rumors. So therefore, I don't really give it a lot of airtime. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.